Hi, my name is Brandon Toombs and I am an employee Citro Consultant. Uh, so uh, today is the fourth and final installment in our series on Integration Center. So uh, if you've made it this long, you are clearly a glutton for punishment. And so uh, for today's episode, I'm going to go through some advanced topics with you to talk about uh, different uh, powerful techniques that you can use as part of Integration Center. So let's get going. Okay, welcome back to our series on Integration Center. Uh, part four is where we get into advanced field topics. So we're going to look at all the different ways that you can manipulate fields uh, in an Integration Center. Um, and so what we're gonna do is just uh, demonstrate some of the capabilities here. Uh, I'm gonna talk about and highlight uh, maybe a few others that we're not going to necessarily demonstrate in the video in the interest of time, but hopefully we'll get a good sense of what uh, the system's capabilities are. Okay, so I'm going to go back in to our demo integration that we've been working with and I'm going to select it and I'm going to just walk through some different kinds of changes that you can make um, using uh, some of the other uh, uh, tools available to you uh, during this process. So I'm going to first of all go into the filters and remove the filter for uh, Delta for the time being so that we can work with some uh, more live data so you can see kind of what everything looks like. Um, so, all right, so now I've got, uh, you can see the data as we had left it. Um, I'm going to start by doing one, uh, by doing a field that's uh, pretty simple, uh, but is um, almost always you're going to end up needing to add a fixed value field uh, into um, your, uh, uh, system and so the the fixed value field um, you can put whatever label you want to I, I'm just gonna call this an identifier and then I'm gonna put a default value in here and if you're just doing just a straight-up fixed value then that's what you would end up um, putting in here is as just a, a default value and that gets and that gets added in now if you change to uh, say uh, date time you can uh, get a default value um, so first of month lat, first of year a few things a few extra abilities there numeric um, you can do a record count um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense for fields in the middle of the record um, or in, in the middle of the interface but uh, if I go back to here to, to string then all I'm going to be doing is putting in a fixed value so I'm just gonna put in the word demo and let's see where it looks like I put it at there it ended up at the end I can show you how I can easily drag that over if that's what the uh, spec called for uh, so it's really easy to add in a uh, fixed value field so let's move on let's talk about uh, another thing that's that's really useful and that is the ability to do lookup tables uh, so I let's just say that uh, uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just show uh, an example that you wouldn't actually need in real life. Um, but uh, for gender, let's just say that you um, you didn't have a way to spell out M and F, or uh, there was some specific value other than male female um, that you needed to put in on gender and. Um, what I'm going to show you now is how I can easily add in a lookup table based on whatever values are currently available um, that are being returned by your system and how you can map those to different values or translate them to different values so that uh, you can pass those off to the interface. So uh, this is a really handy tool. So I'm just going to add in a new lookup table. I'm just going to call it gender. And all I have to do here is put in uh, the input code and then I can just put in uh, the output code if I need a description for some reason I can do that and so I save that lookup table now uh, let's see here I'm going to click OK and you'll see voila the uh, gender has now been updated uh, to the values in, my, in our lookup table so that's that's really simple um, another um, pretty simple 
uh, change that uh, that you may need to make from time to time uh, would be to change out uh, something uh, in the formatting um, that you have in the system. So uh, in this example, you see that our system has dashes in the middle of our cost center. Well, maybe your provider doesn't want the dashes for your cost centers in there. So you can do a um, edit calculation here. And you can see here um, that because this is a string field, um, the system is letting me see what functions are available to me um, if uh, uh, given the fact that it is a, um, a that it's a string. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to just say remove all, and then I'm just going to put in the dash. And you can see when that's done, uh, we have the uh, uh, dashes are gone. So. Okay, so we've been through a few basic scenarios. Now, what happens if we need to do something that is a little bit more complicated? That is where the calculated fields come into play. So um, I'm going to show you an example of a, a calculation scenario. And this one is actually one, there's a KBA for exactly how this one works. And that is uh, for calculating the annual salary. Um, so, um, one question you probably have right off the bat is, well, isn't there an annualized salary field uh, within Employee Central? Uh, the answer is yes, but that is not actually a, a stored value, and it is only something that is available to uh, the system um, just when when you're doing a display. So if you're wanting to actually send it, uh, send that that total via an interface. Uh, you need to come in and create a calculated field as part of your integration. Um, so what I'm going to show is uh, what it looks like if I just uh, am calculating per period amounts. So let's say monthly, semi-monthly, bi-weekly amounts, and I want to annualize that. I'm going to show just that part of the process. Um, now, if you have uh, also hourly employees, I'll talk you through how you could also uh, uh, do that calculation in the same field, even if you wanted to. Um, but for uh, simplicity's sake, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to focus in on the salary example here. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in the uh, actual um, name that you want to use. So I'm just going to use annual salary. And for type, uh, it's really important that you say what kind of value that you want because that's going to uh, um, make a difference on what kinds of functions are available. So I'm going to choose numeric. And then what I want to do logic-wise is I want to, um, I, I want to uh, identify all of the salaried employees um, and not... Uh, not the hourly employees, uh, but I want to I want to filter down to only the salaried employees and then do this calculation for them. Uh, so the way to do that is I would come in here and I'm going to do an if then. So if then means that if my conditions are correct, then I'm going to do what I'm what I what I am uh, 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 starting out to do. Yeah, I could do an if then else if I want to do. Um, if I want to also add another branch in. And so in this example, I'm only going to be dealing with the salaried people, but I could do, if I really wanted to do the salary calculation or the hourly calculation, I could do an if then else and say, if, if the person's salary, then, then, and then do this uh, specific type of calculation, uh, else do the hourly calculation, in which case you would just take the uh, rate uh, that's in the system times the number of hours times 52. That's how you would get to the annualized salary for your hourly folks. Um, but I, again, I, for, for these purposes, what I'm going to do is just focus in on the salary side of that equation. So go in and I'm going to associate. Uh, so first of all, I need to create my condition. So I'm going to do my condition based on employment type. So I'm going to associate the employment type and say, if the employment type is salaried staff, then I'm going to do my calculation. So I'm going to associate the field and um, I'm going to, again, I'm starting at per person, which is essentially biographical information. And I need to get to job information because that is where the, um, that that is where the uh, employment type is. So I'm going to go to employment nav, and from here, then I have to. Do, I'm going from employment nav to job information nav, 
And from here, I'm also going to need to go into employment type, but I want to actually look in the pick list. I want to look at the definitions instead of looking at the option IDs. So I need to go down to the employment nav or employment type nav. There it is. And uh, lastly, normally what I would do in real life is probably use the external code because that is the, it's just a little bit cleaner. But for purposes of this demo, I'm actually going to use the label. So I'm gonna go in and just select the label and then I will change the association to the label. And so if the label is equal to, and I believe I've already got it in here, you have salaried staff. Uh, so if the uh, employment type is salaried staff, then I want to do the calculation. And so the calculation that I want to do is going to be a calculation that is going to be the uh, amount times the annualization factor. So I'll show you what, where I go to get that. So again, I need to go to employment navigation. And, and then from here, I need to navigate to the actual amount um, for, the calc uh, for this. So I'm going to go into compensation information and then I need to go to the uh, recurring pay and then I would put in the amount field. Okay, so we've chosen the amount, but the question is what if you have multiple amounts in your compensation information? Um, and uh, so what you would have to do is filter down the values to only the pay components that you're interested in. So this is where the field filters actually do come into play. So I'm going to go to the, comp uh, I'm gonna navigate down to my compensation and then from here I'm going to filter based on the pay components. So I want, only want to get the pay components that, that are actually going to have the salary amount. So in this system the pay component or the, the pay component that I'm interested in because it's a US interface is going to be base sal US. So that is the that is the pay component that we're going to use um, for uh, for our amount. So I'm going to change the association to the amount and then, but it's not just the amount because that is the per period amount. The next thing I need to do is I need to also multiply by the annualization factor. So that means that I need to identify the annualization factor. And so the, the annualization factor is going to be on the pay component. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to select So I'm going to select the pay component again, but this time I'm going to go to the frequency navigation and I'm going to choose the annualization factor. So I'm going to choose uh, this so that it can know what the calculation is that I need to base this off of. So the annualization factor uh, just basically tells the system how uh, what the amount needs to be multiplied uh, based on in order to get to the full amount for the, for the year. So again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to base this off of the uh, pay component Component being what we're expecting, which would be base sal US. Okay, so we have the amount times the annualization factor, and that should get us to our calculation. Now I get uh, more data. Now there's some, there definitely is some uh, bad data in here, and you can see that with the uh, exclamation points. But overall, you can see that I do have an annualized salary getting calculated for for these em employees. So. Uh, that's how I can do a uh, annualized salary calculation. So hopefully uh, from that uh, you get a good chance to, to see some, some of the capabilities for uh, a little bit more complex processing in Integration Center. It's not as robust as what you would get in CPI where you would be able to do some scripting and, and you could really come up with lots of, uh, lots of additional ways that you can manipulate the data. But uh, this one does handle the, the basics pretty well. So hopefully uh, you find that useful 
useful and you can now put uh, your skills to use on your uh, integration uh, project at your company.